Good morning, everybody. I'm Carter Sartell. I'm here with my colleague, Hunter Dunbar, to talk to you about how to manage security in Einstein Analytics. From an agenda perspective, we're going to talk to you a little bit about our firm and what we do. We're going to do an overview of how security works in Einstein Analytics. And then we're going to dive into a few different client examples that we have implemented in the past. Hunter and I work for Cervello. We're a professional services firm. We're based out of Boston. We also have offices in New York, Dallas, and London. We're a Salesforce consulting and product development partner with capabilities on Heroku, Einstein Analytics, custom development, and communities. So this slide represents an overview of how data is secured in Einstein Analytics. It's important to note that Einstein and Analytics is a separate database than your Salesforce database. Therefore, it has a different method of implementing security. In Einstein Analytics, you have the ability to secure data at the record level within the data set. You also have the ability to secure your data from an app perspective, and that secures all of the data in your data sets your lenses, and your dashboards. We also have the concept of inherited security, but there are some limitations using that, which we'll get into in a few more minutes. So this represents the differences between Salesforce security and Einstein analytics. So on the Salesforce side, we have things like org-wide defaults. We have roles and profiles record ownership, and sharing roles to control security. In Einstein Analytics, we have an inherited security, which pulls from Salesforce security. But there are some record limitations there. We also have row-level security using security predicates. And then we have the app-level security that we talked about before. So, these are the data security examples that Hunter is going to take us through in a few minutes. Our first example is a client example that we had that had a low volume of data, which allowed us to leverage the inherited security feature. That pulls from your Salesforce security so that you don't have to set up security in Einstein Analytics. The second example we have was a fairly simple security predicate so they, the client had a high volume of data, but they had very simple security standards. They just wanted to pull based on the activity owner. And the last example we'll look at is the most complicated. Our client had essentially wanted to mimic uh, the security standards that were in Salesforce. So all of the different org-wide defaults and roles and sharing we wanted to replicate that within Einstein Analytics. Next, I'm going to turn it over to Hunter, and he's going to walk us through these examples in a little bit more detail to show you how we implemented that. Awesome. Thanks, Carter. All right. So um, first off, we're going to talk about inherited security in Einstein Analytics. Inherited security is just a simple thing that you enable in the setup menu in Salesforce. Um, when you define a new uh, data flow, when you're pulling a new object in, you specify an object that needs to uh, be the source of the security for that data set. So if you're pulling in the account object from Salesforce, you would just say that the sharing source should be account. This is great. It replicates all of your uh, Salesforce security in Einstein Analytics, and users will see exactly what data they should see. The issue is that you can only pull 2,000 rows when you're doing this type of uh, security technique. If there are more than 2,000 rows returned by any query, it's going to error out, and the user won't have access to any data. So most of the time in Einstein Analytics, you're going to be pulling more than 2,000 rows. So pretty much the tried and true standard way of enforcing security is using something called a security predicate. 
A security predicate is essentially a filter condition that you apply. It's the first filter that gets applied whenever you're pulling a data set. Uh, the syntax is fairly simple. You'll take any field from your Einstein Analytics data set. It's a Boolean equal to any user field. So let's say you wanted to limit uh, access to data based on account ownership. We would say account owner is equal to user ID. So if my data set has four accounts in it, uh, when I apply that security predicate in the data set setup, they would then only have access to two accounts. So when we were, um, that's a fairly simple scenario. You want to limit based on account ownership. Uh, we had a client that was implementing Einstein Analytics, and they wanted to lock down security based on pretty much exactly what was in uh, the account security in Salesforce. And we were talking about how, how they thought about security. They always kept coming back to the account share object. The account share object is an object that contains all users and groups of users that have access to an account in Salesforce. Um, the next level of complexity is that the account share object is always going to be an account ID, and then it's going to be a user or group ID. Usually in Salesforce, when you're thinking about uh, IDs, it's an account ID always begins with 001. An opportunity ID always begins with 006. The complexity with the user or group ID on the account share object is that it can be either a user ID that begins with 005 or a group ID that begins with 00G. So we need to collect all of this information about users and groups of users that have access to an account, and we need to get it into a single field. Einstein Analytics has a special type of field that can accommodate this scenario. It's called a multi-value field. So when we're joining our account share object to the account object in, sales for, in Einstein Analytics, we're going to specify a Boolean called is multi-value. It'll either be equal to false or true. When it's equal to false, that means our join is a lookup single value join. So a simple scenario that I think a lot of people would uh, be familiar with is when you're pulling, when you're joining opportunity line items to opportunities in Salesforce. Um, you need to specify a price for that opportunity line item. And that's when we specify a price book. So you've got two price books here, a custom price book with a uh, price of 800 and a standard price book with 700. If we joined with is multi-value equal to false, we would get a single row of data. And so you can see uh, in the join tables, in that join table, uh, the price book is custom the unit price is 800. We pulled the first row of data that we found when we joined these two data sets. Now if I do is multi-value equal to true, we're going to collapse any dimensions in the lookup data set. So what we end up with is custom and standard existing in the same field. This is an issue when we're uh, combining metrics. So you can see with a multi-value join, the unit price is going to be set to 1500 So this can be a problem, except we're only dealing with IDs. And IDs are always going to be dimensional. And therefore, they'll maintain their values when we join them. So coming back to our example of an account share data set, we've got a simple account table, two account IDs, Acme Construction, Universal Containers. And then we've got an account share. And this account share table has a combination of user IDs and group IDs in it. So you can see account one uh, is listed, and user one has access to account one. User two has access to account one. And then group one has access to account one. And let's pretend that group one refers to a public group in Salesforce. So just a group that you create and add members to. If we go down a level, that group table can have multiple users that are in the group. And we need to figure out how to pull those users into a single field that we'll apply in our security predicate in Einstein Analytics. So let's say my public group has user 4 and user 2 are members of the public group. 
I'm now going to join that group back to my account share table. And what I end up with is a multi-value field that contains user 4 and user 2 in it. So now I've got a list of account share records, and I've got a list of users that are members of groups that are in the account share record. And I'm going to join that back to the account. So you can see the user IDs get collapsed into a single field. User 1 and user 2 have access to account 1. And then all of those users that were in groups are collapsed into a single field. So user 4 and user 2, because they were in a public group that had access to the account, get listed in a single field now. So when I apply my security predicate, I would set the name of the field in Einstein Analytics, and then I would set the user IDs. You can have multiple values on the left side of that Boolean and a single value on the right side of the Boolean. So that's all for the presentation today. Um, Carter and I will be available afterwards to answer any questions that uh, folks have, but uh, really appreciate your time. Thank you.